Congratulations, Simran, on being named one of our Bloomberg New Economy Catalysts. Um, I want to start by asking you a question about a study published in the online journal Nature Sustainability just this month. The study estimates that there are 5.25 trillion particles of litter at a minimum currently floating in our oceans. Your company, Bluefin, aims to cut that number down. Tell me how that works. So thank you very much. Uh, it was an honor being selected. Um, Bluefin essentially is a robot that collects waste and water. And, and the waterways that we target are river, canals, and coastlines because these are the large, uh, act, like, they are the reason that waste is essentially carried out to our ocean. And so by implementing Bluefin as, as a preventative measure, measure in these locations, we would be able to reduce the amount of waste that ends up in the ocean in the first place. Tell me just more about how it works. It floats on the surface of the water and pulls trash right out of there. How, how does it how does it know? Um, you know, it's a smart robot. Right. So so Bluefin, essentially, uh, we don't have any sort of pulling mechanism. Uh, we, we tried to keep it as simple as we could. And so Bluefin essentially goes towards the ways to collect it. Um, in most, and, and this is where also operation planning becomes very interesting for us, because in some waterways, you'll notice that waste automatically comes out to the sides. Um, and so then we focus on only collecting, like running bluefin in a way where it's essentially collecting waste along the, along the sides and, and, and the corners. Um, bluefin also does, and, and we are working on like a waste detection algorithm. So bluefin would be able to recognize and optimize this operation when it's running and collect the most waste in that location. And you're working on doing kind of uh, adding new additional features to the robots, right? Tell me a little bit more about kind of like the water testing, the pH testing that you do, um, and, and sort of liquid waste removal that you're working on. Our shift to this modular design came with expanding Bluefin's use cases. And, and this would allow us to, like you said, assist in oil spill collection, uh, also assist in biomass removal, which would be things like algae and water hyacinths. Uh, Bluefin, even with its first prototype, can has enough space to be packed with like multiple sensors. And this is where you know water quality testing in terms of pH, temperature, and turbidity can be incorporated. Who is your target customer for these robots? And and I guess in other words, you know where where is the where, who are the kind of the worst offenders? Where is the problem? most dire? So research has shown that the problem is worse in, in locations where waste management pro practices are not being implemented properly. And so a lot of rivers in India, a lot of rivers um, out of the Philippines, these are sort of our two primary locations to go out and put bluefins in to start with, and then sort of scale to other locations. You know, we're coming out of the pandemic now. Do you feel like the pandemic has maybe made things worse in terms of plastics emptying into the ocean. Certainly with the rise of e-commerce, there's a lot of extra packaging. Uh, what do you think? I think it's been a combination. There's also a, a rise in using plastic masks, PPE kits, and, and gloves because everyone's worried, uh, and, and fairly so. And, and so, like you said, e-commerce, uh, I think the pandemic has also been great in helping people realize uh, what climate change is. I, I think there was a lot of people that were able to deny its existence. And during lockdown, they saw the world heal itself. They saw the, the footprint that, that human beings were having on the planet. And so I, I think it was a combination of both. What role do you think technology should play in solving climate change? I mean, is it really mission impossible to clean up plastics in the ocean? Or is the real answer kind of we need to combine cleanup efforts like yours with, you know, lifestyle changes or government regulation, like removing single-use plastics from use? What do, what do you think is the solution? I, I think the most effective solution is going to be take, uh, taking a more approach. No matter how small your action is, that action is going to have a ripple effect and contribute to the larger picture, especially in the form of policy in the form of potentially carbon tax, in the form of solutions like Bluefin. We need to see a lot more inventions for climate technology. It is very much possible that the invention uh, or, or the innovation that will solve climate change has not even been invented yet. And, and so there needs to be a lot more support uh, of, of, of climate tech. Yeah, I mean, are there other transformational kind of innovations that you're excited about right now? Like you know, like you say, the solution may not have been invented yet. Um, what, what kind of excites you most? What are the things that you're seeing happen out there that, 
that give you a lot of hope for what we can do against climate change? I, I think there's a lot of innovation that's gone into renewable energy. Uh, a lot of more efficiency that's come in for countries to be able to adopt it at a, at a significantly larger space and completely able to go off of coal or fossil fuels. Um, in, in the UAE alone, we've seen, you know, huge solar parks come up where hopefully, which will hopefully also take, make the economy less reliant uh, or more reliant rather on, on clean energy. What would you say your end goal is here? How would you define success for your company? Uh, I think the metric for success would be to cease to exist. Uh, hopefully, there will be no waste in the ocean for us to clean up. And do you have a timeline on that? Uh, I'd like it to be as soon as possible. I feel like we're, we're, we, we need a lot of things done yesterday. And so, so every single day, we're trying to catch up on that.